When ChatGPT was launched back in 2022, it became the fastest growing internet app of all time. An AI chatbot that could answer virtually any question within seconds. People began turning to ChatGPT instead of Google. Entrepreneurs began using ChatGPT as their personal assistant. Developers began using ChatGPT to replace themselves. And students? Well, students began using ChatGPT to cheat. Teachers are concerned about the new AI program, which can generate answers and write essays with perfect grammar. Students are using it to cheat on tests and even write essays. New technology that is making it easier to cheat. He's raising questions in schools about its use and what's considered cheating. Artificial intelligence being used to cheat. Called ChatGPT. Experts are claiming that ChatGPT could put an end to education as we know it. And they might be right but not for the reason that you think. Let's start with the education system. At around the age of five, children are sent into school to prep for the real world, but the real world is changing very fast. Our current education system was modeled back in 1840, and it was designed in the industrial age, where the goal of education was to mass produce factory workers that were docile, obedient, and understood basic orders. And it worked well. It was an economically viable model that created agreeable workers. But 200 years later, we've moved a long way past the industrial age. Yet classrooms still look identical. In 1956, educational psychologist Benjamin Bloom outlined the framework to better understand how we learn in the hope that we could start teaching students more effectively. He named it Bloom's taxonomy after himself. In short, it divided cognitive learning into six categories, and these were then ranked in a hierarchical order depending on how much thinking was required for each. So simply memorizing and recalling information doesn't require much brain processing power, whereas tasks that put an emphasis on creativity, so being able to think outside of the box, required much more thinking. The industrial age didn't need people to think outside of the box, so the education system was built on a low order of thinking, this is the foundation of the classroom we see today, a 30 student to one tutor environment where students are expected to passively absorb the information presented to them. And they're then assessed on their ability to remember that information in standardized tests. Yet now in the 21st century, the world needs innovators, but it's been forgotten that at the top of Bloom's taxonomy was creativity, the ability to imagine and build something from nothing. The current education system doesn't acknowledge creativity. It wasn't designed for it. In fact, it sucks it out of us. In 1968, a study followed 1,600 children from the age of five all the way up until they were 15. The aim was to determine the effect that school had on creativity levels. In the study, creativity was determined by divergent thinking. So children were asked how many uses they could think of for everyday objects like a paperclip. And so the more uses they could think of, the more creative they were deemed to be. The average adult can think of maybe 10 to 15, but the study found that before school, 98% of five-year-olds were classed as geniuses based on this measure of creativity. The same children were then retested at 10 years old and again at 15, and the results were astounding. What we concluded, wrote George Land, the author of the study, is that non-creative behavior is being learned. Our education system is broken and continues to churn out conformist cookie cutter people that can't think for themselves. And not just broken, but outdated too. So let's fast forward to the present day. Educators are describing ChatGPT as a tool for cheating, but maybe they've just got an outdated definition of what cheating is. Let me give you an example. In school, you're told to sit down, stop talking, get out your books, go to page 69 and complete the questions and no peeking at the answers on the back. And you're warded for doing exactly what you're told. In this scenario, cheating could look like you talking to your friend and sharing answers, or otherwise known as collaboration in the real world. Cheating could be you Googling how to work out a specific question, or otherwise known as productive self-learning. So do you see my point? There is no definitive definition of what cheating is. None of this is about cheating. It fundamentally comes down to one thing, and that's fear and specifically a fear of AI. It's a bit of an odd one that we thought that language in a way was quite human and quite unique and quite special. And it turns out that it can be emulated quite effectively based purely on statistical models. And that I think is a surprise for a lot of us and it's quite unsettling as well and it is a bit of That's a Dr. Lewis Potter. He's the founder of geekymedics.com, the largest medical education platform in the world. They've been incorporating ChatGPT into their platform to help health professionals all around the world learn more effectively. 
we recently sat down and discussed this fear of AI in education. Sort of history is littered with these technological innovations that come about and the current status quo and the people involved in that feel threatened and feel like, oh, is that going to take away my role, my skill set? Whether it was the airplane, the television, the internet, even writing on paper, the Greek philosopher Socrates spoke about how the invention of writing would promote forgetfulness. Whatever it was, history keeps on repeating itself. The adoption of something transformative is always met with resistance until something called the chasm. This is the point where the world begins to appreciate the transformative value and innovation has. And only once society had moved past the chasm do we begin to see mass adoption. And depending on the innovation, it could take society decades to move past it. So the question is, how do we speed it up? But we need to tackle the root cause. Firstly, why are people fearful in the first place? There's a great example of the elevator when that was invented. Before then, there was people that would just pull on ropes and that would lift you up. And when the automated elevator came out, nobody would get in them because they were terrified of putting their life in the hands of this machine. Let's draw some parallels from the past. Back in 1825, people believed that trains would rip you apart and that the high speeds would cause your body to melt. We now, of course, know this isn't true, but AI is feared for a very similar reason. People fear what they don't know or understand. The lack of knowledge surrounding what AI actually is and what it does, as well as Hollywood pushing a narrative that AI will take over the world is causing that same sense of rejection for the same reasons we saw with the train. And since the beginning of automation itself, people have feared that their jobs would be replaced by machines. And 200 years later, we're still seeing these exact same headlines. And perhaps the most relevant is the introduction of calculators in school. Back in 1966, there was a huge worry that using a calculator would diminish people's abilities to think for themselves. Sound familiar? It's the exact same argument that educators are using when trying to ban ChatGPT. In every single example throughout history, the same cycle repeats itself. If you look back, all that happens is that we adapt and almost always human plus technology is better than technology. So with our minds now open, let's explore how AI like ChatGPT can fix our broken education system. In 1984, Benjamin Bloom came up with the Two Sigma problem. He found that students who received one-on-one -on -one tutoring performed two standard deviations better than students who learn in the traditional 30 to one classroom environment. And so to give some context, that's enough to turn an average student into an excellent student. The problem part comes from the fact that it's not realistic to provide every single person with their very own personal tutor for every single subject. And that's both from an economical and practicality point of view. So since 1984, educators from around the world have been scratching their heads, thinking of ways to overcome this problem. Until now, AI tools like ChatGPT turn Benjamin Bloom's Two Sigma problem into a Two Sigma opportunity. An opportunity for every single student to have their very own AI personal tutor. It's like having multiple experts at your disposal at any time of day for minimal cost to give you an answer. Imagine the possibility of an AI tutor that can adapt its teaching style to the level of understanding and learning pace of any student, and it's available 24-7. It can additionally assess a student's level of understanding through quizzes and interactive discussions and tailor lesson plans accordingly, as well as breaking down geographical and socioeconomic barriers for students that previously wouldn't have been able to afford or access individualised tuition. These models are, at the minute, often used in the context of giant models. So chat GPT where it's ingested the entire internet essentially so it's like someone having the whole internet in their brain and replying to you but as you might imagine in that situation it ends up giving quite mediocre answers to most things because it's drawing from such an enormous corpus of data that it becomes a bit of a well it depends could be this could be that um, or it you know it's been tuned to not be too opinionated about specific things to avoid being completely off mark and wrong. Sal Khan, who is the founder of Khan Academy, is at the forefront of this push with their AI tutor, Khan Migo. Now, if the student makes a mistake, and this will surprise people who think large language models are not good at mathematics, notice not only does it notice the mistake, it asks the student to explain their reasoning, but it's actually doing what I would say not just even an average tutor would do, but an excellent tutor would do. It's actually it's able to divine what is probably the misconception in that student's mind. I've just finished five years of medical school and the biggest barrier that I encountered when using ChatGPT to learn medicine was people saying that it 
can make stuff up or it just gives generic answers. So how do we overcome this in a field so complex like medicine? But I think really where we're going with this are small, highly specialized models that run locally on your device so that they are lightning fast and because they are constrained in their data set to you know, your domain, they are very specific and accurate with their answers. Google, for example, came out with MedPalm 2. It was their equivalent of ChatGPT trained on medical data and it ended up passing US medical exams with a score of 86.5%. And for context, a pass is usually considered anything more than 60. So where does this all leave us? Well, I mentioned earlier that children lose their creativity as they progress in education. And a large part of that is the emphasis put on memorization, the boring tasks, or the tasks that don't require much brain power. People will just have answers, um, and tailored answers to their specific questions to allow them to, you know, move up to that next layer of knowledge. If we go back to Bloom's taxonomy, we now have the opportunity to let AI do those bottom layers of thinking. It frees up people's minds to focus on the top layers. Our global challenges demand creative thinkers. The future could be guided by one of two narratives. And the first is a dystopian outlook guided by fear. We can let fear guide us, ban AI or tighten regulation around it. So that would probably mean banning ChatGPT in education and preventing our future generation from learning how to interact with it. But in this scenario, we build a generation that will struggle to learn how to use it. It ultimately allows the bad actors in the world to have better AI than the good actors. Or we can reimagine the education system. And of course, it's going to require some humility to acknowledge that our current education system is broken and it is consistently failing our future generations. But AI is the catalyst needed to reimagine what it should be. And it is the fix that the world is in desperate need of. And so to end, Sal Khan puts it perfectly here. And uh, perhaps the most poetic use case is if AI, artificial intelligence, can be used to enhance HI, human intelligence, human potential, and human purpose. If you'd like to watch the full podcast I recorded with Dr. Lewis Potter, it's out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts now. So check it out, the link is in the description. If you enjoyed this documentary, then please subscribe to the channel. And you can check out my latest video where I dissect the science and delve into why a Zempic is not a miracle weight loss drug. Until next time and see you soon.